So, yesterday I pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay, so... Um, Doom 4 was revealed yesterday. Uh, it's just called Doom, but I'm going to call it Doom 4. Uh, so we don't confuse it with this one. And... Uh, I didn't like it. I was not impressed. And I will admit that I did... Um, maybe react a bit too harshly. But it was a on the spot, you know, emotional reaction to one of my favorite franchises of all time, uh, my favorite shooter of all time, quite, quite literally. Uh, and, you know, I waited a decade for this, and it wasn't really what I wanted, and um, it wasn't even really close to what I wanted, but, you know, whatever. A bunch of hours have passed, over 12 hours has passed, I've watched the footage a few more times, I watched the E3 trailer that was released later, um, and I've had some time to think about it, and I want to be more productive than to just rag on it. So I'm going to um, go through six good things, six bad things, and six things or improvements I think Bethesda and id could do or show in order to uh, make people who do feel like me, which I'm not the only one, um, feel a bit more um, at home with the new Doom 4. Um, and uh, I'm going to go through them here, and um, hopefully... It it will be it will seem a bit more fair than me just going, Oh, the revenant can fly. Sorry. The good. Um first of all, ultra violence. The game is super violent. It's so violent. It's mega violent. It's gloriously violent. <laughs> um Doom has always been incredibly violent and gory and Doom 4 is no different. You run up to enemies with a super shotgun and blow their legs off and blood spew everywhere and then you you shoot them again in the head and it explodes and you know it's it's glorious it's absolutely wonderful you want that out of doom you want massive pools of dead demons and blood just spewing everywhere like that's something you want um and i am very much i very much love that um, that they actually have kept that. It, it, that I, there's no denying the game is incredibly violent. It's it's it basically has the same effect. I would say Gears of War. In fact, it's very much like Gears of War when that first came out. Like, oh my god, games can be this gory kind of feeling. And you know that is that is uh, something that Doom Four should be commended for because that is something Doom should be keeping the standard of. It's is how gory a game can be. So. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, second, the UI is actually really solid. Um, it's very clean, very minimal, but like it clearly shows how much health you have, your ammo, and all the stuff. Even the weapon wheel looks pretty good. Um, I quite genuinely um, love the fact that we are back to numbers for, for health with um, health pickups rather than health regen. Uh, I'm not a fan of health regen in most games, and not because I feel it, it gets too easy, like some say. But rather, I feel that um, it changes the way combat works in a way that I don't really like most of the time. And I, I was worried that this game would um, end up being a health regen game. Uh, that would, you know, end up being taking pot shots of demons behind walls. Which, to be fair, you do in Doom 1, Doom 2, and Doom 3 as well. But only when you're at, like, 10% 10, 10 health. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I like that. The UI, the UI is really good. And... Um, uh, yeah, it's just good. Uh, third of all, the calm moments in the trailer were really creepy. Like, there are moments when the game isn't all action, and those moments were really good horror moments. Like, there's a point, a point at the start where you're walking around uh, the Mars base, and, like, you hear noises and stuff behind you, and you go to fight demons there, and that was that was really good sound design. And when you go indoors and there's nothing there, like, you find a person who committed suicide via via the super shotgun, and you have to, you have to rip it out of their um, cold, dead hands, uh, and it's just, like, um, that is impressive. Like, that, that, that it, it shows that... They still remember that Doom is not just an action game, it's a horror action, an action horror game. Which is what it always have been. I, I talked about this as I was playing Doom 1, 2, and 3, um, one each day leading up to this. How even the original Doom and Doom 2 have uh, a lot of staples to horror in them. Especially in sound design, to be honest. Um, 
And speaking of sound, next up, the E3 trailer, which was released after my video was already up and done, uh, actually has some really good music. I didn't like the soundtrack in the um, demonstration, but the trailer music, superb. Like, it was really good. Um, it felt very um, Doom 1, I would say. Like, it was very rocking, metal, awesome tunes. And Doom 1 wasn't all just, it wasn't just all metal, and I hope they remember that. Phobos Anomaly is a sad, sad, slow tune, fitting the fact that you're about to die. And, um, of course, Doom 3 used silence to its strength very often, so I hope they don't just focus on metal, but that trailer? Genuinely good. Um, yeah, so, good music pick there for the uh, E3 trailer. That's, uh, that's good. Um, next up, it does dare to do new things. Like, it's not just a game relying 100% on retro. This isn't um, a game you're screaming, this is Doom 1, but now it's HD. Like, it's... They have taken new elements into it. Elements from modern shooters. Which, admittedly, I'm not, I don't like all of them uh, in this case, but it does show that they're willing to evolve something. And whether or not that ends up being good or bad in the long run, we'll see. But it's good from a design point of view that they're not scared of trying new things. Because... That was something I was genuinely worried about. Not because it has ever been scared of trying new things. In fact, they always have been trying new things. But, um... I don't know. There was something about, uh... I think it was the two-second teaser, which was literally just... Here's a super shotgun. Here's a revenant. And I was thinking, like, oh, is this just going to be... Remember, Doom? And nothing else. But no, it was... It's new stuff. And that's to be commended. And hopefully the good idea behind new stuff will come up with good content, but that's up to time to tell. Uh, and lastly, the multiplayer and the mod tools, um, the snap map thing, is really impressive. Like, super impressive. It's, um... I mean, the multiplayer, we didn't, we didn't see much of the multiplayer itself. It actually looked pretty, pretty quake-ish when, when you didn't fight demons in it, which is fine, really. I mean, I would rather just want the quake 5, I guess, but, like, that's still fine, because Quake is fun, so that's awesome. But the mod tools on, on consoles and PC allow you to create your own maps and modes and everything and you just instantly share it, little be planet style? Like, I did not expect that out of Doom. And you know what? The most beautiful thing about it is that even if you don't like Doom 4 and you end up buying it and playing like, oh, this isn't really my thing, maybe you can still find stuff in there that you will like. It reminds me of StarCraft 2, where uh, Blizzard... Um, and lets you um, basically use the StarCraft 2 mod tools to create your own games, which you can play for free if you have the StarCraft 2 Starter Edition on Battle.net. Um, so, that was really cool, and uh, it's basically the, uh, I mean, okay, this is the 360 copy, but it's still like BFG edition of Doom 3. Um, I love the BFG edition, I explained why on uh, my video, but, um, um, it did take out mod support, which was like the weirdest thing, because id Software and Bethesda have, has, have always been pro-mod support. Um, but now they're building it into the game, and even for, even for consoles. Like, that's amazing, really. That makes me happy. That, 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 is, that is neat. So, there you have it. There are six good things about Doom 4. Let's move to six bad things. It's visually bland. Uh, the environments are incredibly generic, and they're all designed and drenched in this dull tones. Like, the entire game was uh, was just... Either, when it wasn't grey, which was, you know, indoors, when there weren't much light, then it got grey tones, which was fine, it looked good. Um, it was always just this drenched in this overbearing orange hue, which looked bad. It just looked bad. Like, it looked focus-tested. Like, focus-tested in a bad way. Like, you know, how people like orange colors uh, mixed with blue on their posters, that's what Hollywood does. We need to make the game all orange and then have a blue HUD. Like, it was just, it just, and yeah, I realize I'm saying that while I'm wearing a shirt with the orange and blue Doom logo, but like, it just looked bad. It looked, it looked like they were trying to 
cover up the fact that they didn't know what to do by just using a colorization filter over it. And I even hell, like hell was yellow, but it still like would it was still yellow to an orange tone and when you went inside it just went orange again. And apart from that, it was just caves with some skulls here and there. I saw more hellish environments in the um, in the promo screenshots for Wolfenstein The Old Blood, which I still need to play. I, ha I, I haven't played The Old Blood yet. Um, and like, that's a Wolfenstein game. Admittedly, they also deal with hell and demons, but still. Um, and continuing off on that, the second bad thing is the demon designs, or just the designs in general, really. They're, they have no identity. They... The demons, I feel like they designed the demons with the idea that you won't be seeing them much. I mean, I, I, get, I get it, you're supposed to blow them away, you're not supposed to get, to get um, attached to them. Every Doom game, Doom 1, Doom 2, Doom 64, Doom 3, and Doom RPG, I think those are all the Doom games that introduced new enemy designs. Um, they've always made sure that every enemy is easily distinguishable, the moment you see them, you know what they are, you know how to fight them, you can think about it. If you haven't met them before, they look different enough to know this is something new, I need to think about what I'm going to do now as you run towards them and eventually running backwards as you're shooting. Um, this game, everything just looked the same. It was just this grey masses of uh, really generic body forms. And then, like, okay, okay, so one has a laser rifle as an arm. I couldn't tell, even when rewatching the video, if that was meant to be a new enemy? Like a different enemy from the regular ones throwing their fireballs in arcs over you? Or if they were the same enemy, but like with a modification, if it's a new enemy, like, I, I, nothing... They just blended together as this weird heap of nothing. And they reminded me of just how generic and boring stuff like, um, the, uh, Chitari warriors were in, uh, the Avengers movie, like, just these grey, boring, alien-like things. Like, they're not fun. They're not interesting. They're not worth looking at. And, um, Doom has always been about interesting demon designs. There was something that looked like the, um, Doom 3 Hell Knight. Sort of. But even then, like, that was a sort of brute enemy, and I think it could go invisible or something. And that would appear now and then in charge. And that, okay, so that was one enemy that looked a bit different, but it didn't look that interesting. And then you had the Mancubus-like thing. Uh, which was, like, it it looked, it reminded me a bit of, like, the, um, whenever there's a fat enemy type in, like, a zombie game, that's what it reminded me of. Like, just these, like, oh yeah, oh, we need the big one as well, let's just do this. And it just looked, I don't know, boring. Everything looked boring. I, just, I'm, I was, uh, boring and, and you just, like, you weren't meant to look at it. And the weapon designs were pretty boring as well, except for the plasma rifle. The plasma rifle looked great, I love that. Um, third of all, finishing moves. The, when, you, when you get prompted to do a finishing move, the enemies start glowing. Blue and orange. Uh, which, first of all, nice choice of colors. Uh, but, that's really immersion breaking. And I hate the word immersion when talking video games, because it's been, it's been rammed into the ground and killed. But it's true. And honestly... It feels like it feels like you're dumb because do you really have to be t be shown with outlines and glowing like this enemy you can go up and punch now? Surely we can tell. Surely we can tell that from like them being down on like a knee and not getting up or something. Like Duke Nukem 3D did that. In that was '96. You telling me we can't do that in 2015? Really? Uh, so no, I that. And it also stops the game. It's, it's, it, it prevents you from shooting. And the only thing that should prevent you from shooting in Doom is that you don't have any ammunition left. Fourth of all, the Doom Marine is no longer a survivor, but a hunter. Uh, at least seemingly. I mean, in Doom 1, and Doom 2, and in Doom 3, you, you are a Doom Marine surviving. You are the underdog, and you earn the status of badass by getting to it, by acclaiming all the weapons, by fighting more and more enemies. And admittedly, this is a presentation, we don't know how the full game will be, but it sounded here like the demons should be as scared of you. And that's never been Doom. And I, I know it's not fair to say that's not Doom, because I just, I just praise it for being different, but... Um, like, it, the entire concept of you fighting in the forces of hell... Unhu like beyond human strength. Often we have to use demon technology 
to fight them, like the Soul Cube or the Unmaker. Um, or like we have to actually go into hell and learn hell to conquer them. But here it was just like, oh yeah, you can go up and rip off the head of this one and throw it into his body and everything you kill dies in one hit, which could, for presentation's sake, based what we have seen. And you, like, it, it felt like nothing could stop you. You were the unbeatable Doom Marine that can kill anything. You weren't doomed. Nothing was doomed except the demons in Doom 4, from what I saw. And honestly, look at the, um, the Mancubus feeding scene. Add a John St. John line to that, and you have a Duke Nukem scene. Seriously. Just add, like, him saying... Spit or swallow, baby. And that's done. There, you got it. You shouldn't be able to that easily create a Duke Nukem scene out of Doom. Fifth, it felt like a room by room wave fest. There was no mention of exploration or nonlinear design apart from the one hand puzzle, which was so mind numbingly easy that it shouldn't even have been shown in a presentation. I mean, once again, it could just be for presentation's sake because the levels felt very scripted, but you can at least point out and mention, like, oh yeah, and if you, there's going to be exploration in the game, like, because there was just this. Let's move to this room, shoot at these things, move to this room, shoot at these things, and that was never Doom. Doom never did that. Doom always had an open level. Sixth and final, uh, the movement is odd. I hate double jumping. I really hate double jumping. I feel double jumping is almost always used, especially in first person shooters, to just make really annoying um, chasms to jump over. And um, the movement just felt off as well. Like this, I'm fine with them being able to climb uh, boxes. That's fine. And you you move fast. That's good. But like, it didn't feel like you could like you you move fast walking wise. But that was like it. That was the extent of how speed worked in the game. And it was cool the first few seconds, but it wore off quickly. Like I I compared it to Wolfenstein: The New Order in my video, where like specifically. You can, you can always do like these maneuvers while running. If you are by a box, you can either climb over it, or you can like start shooting over the box as you're running past it, and then you run forward and you slide beneath and you keep on shooting. You can always do things. You, you don't have to be stationary. And here you weren't stationary, but it felt like you weren't doing anything except running up to the next enemy, hitting a button to kill it, running up to the next enemy. And no, like it, it felt like they wanted fast combat, but didn't think about how a player should move in fast combat, and I didn't like that. Uh, so that, 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 that was, those were my six bad things about Doom 4, and now the six improvements or changes or just notifications I think it and Bethesda could make in order to um, uh, help us feel better about it. First of all, the finishing moves. Just make them part of a Berserker power-up. We saw one in the multiplayer trailer anyway. Um, like, that's fine. As, when, when, you're in, when you're in the Berserker mode, which has been in, in all the Doom games, you're meant to go hands-on with the demons for a short while. That's the one point, point where, like, now I'm the powerful one. It's a short while, and it's awesome, and it feels good, and that's when you want finishing moves like that. And remove the glowing. Uh, and you know what? You know what? You can add a difficulty option, I suppose, and maybe there is one where you only have the glowing or the non-Berserker finishing moves on the lower difficulties, but like, right now, that's not what I, at least what I would want to play as my normal game is glowing enemies and one hit kills on them. Because players, at least I feel, aren't that dumb. Uh, we know when we can attack an enemy, we should know, otherwise the game is badly designed, and we don't want to one hit kill enemies unless we have been given reason to, to be able to do so. That's how I feel. Uh, second improvement, would be to dare to show more color. Don't just drench everything in orange, especially enemies. The enemies had no distinct colors. Not even the logo had color. The logo is just white. Boring white. Like, you could do so much with it. Like, th there's always been color in Doom. Even Doom 3, when I was accused of being like black and gray, shine, like, lighting was a big part of Doom, and they always had a bunch of colored lighting. It looked great. But here it's just like. The, the, okay, yeah, we can have one one color per stage and everything should be drenched in it. So make sure all the enemies are gray so that they just soak up the color. Like, no, please, show more color. Uh, I don't know, the, the Bethesda blog mentioned that the pinky was in the demonstration. 
I looked through it frame by frame, and I couldn't find the Pinky. So either they just they said the wrong demon name, or they made Pinky a grey demon walking around on two legs, looking a bit human esque. Which I hope not. But like, like you have you have a, you have a game in which an enemy is called a Pinky. Show color, please. It's not hard. Um, third of all. Just ensure us that levels aren't linear paths with scripted waves of enemies. It's not hard. Like th th That should be one of the PR things you're always going to say, and we will still call it bullshit until we get to play it, but like, not saying it is even worse. You want to stand and say, uh, non-linear level design. Like, you want... Because that's... Doom has never been linear, and you shouldn't make it linear, because players deserve non-linear gameplay in shooters these days, because there's too many linear shooters these days. I don't have much more to say on that. Um, four, give us time to appreciate the design some more. Um, like, I know bullet sponge is used as a negative term, but the reason it's okay to have bullet sponge enemies in Doom is because they're demons, they're not humans. They can take being hit with a chain gun 20 times before they die and explode. And that gives you time to both see what the enemy is, feel like you're killing it, and feel like you're prevailing as you're killing it. The only time it did this was with the chainsaw, which honestly, I would have, I actually liked the idea of the chainsaw, because the chainsaw you've always pushed through the enemies, like you've, you've held down the chainsaw button and you get stuck in the enemy as you push through and then you go through the enemy. That's awesome. And they want, they recreated that with a finishing move, and if you could actually do that while moving still, I would have loved it, but instead it like just stops the gameplay for like three or four seconds, and that's a bit too long to just stop entirely. But if it, but if you actually felt like you were pushing through the enemy, that would be awesome. Um... So yeah, give us some time to appreciate the designs and make the designs better, because demons can be bullet sponges. We want to we want to put a lot of rounds in them before they explode, please. Speaking of rounds, fifth thing, new weapons. The old weapons are great. Shotgun, super shotgun, plasma gun, chain gun. Great. Please, and the BFG, of course, which you shouldn't have shown the BFG. Leave, leave that one a surprise, at least. But please... Please show us new weapons. I want to see new ideas when it comes to weaponry because that's always fun to see. Like I would have loved to see a completely new idea for a weapon because you can do so many weird things with weapons. Like I, I you would think that in 2015 we would have evolved past the Doom 2 weaponry, right? Right? Uh, sixth and final final improvement, uh it's really just look at what machine games did with the gunplay in Wolfenstein the New Order. I already said that, but please do it. Please look at Wolfenstein the New Order. Whatever you think of the game, the actual gunplay, running around shooting and that stuff, is possibly, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, is possibly the best gunplay in any video game ever. And that's it. And that's what I had to say about Doom 4. That, 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 those were my good things, my bad things, and improvements I think could be made. This was a long video, but I felt that I should get my thoughts out properly, and maybe some people will see where I'm coming from now. And thank you for watching. I love you all. E3 is starting, well, half an hour from when I'm recording this. And um, uh, there'll be cool E3 content coming up um, with me... Jim Sterling, Petite Mistress, and some nefarious lobby on this channel later. So look forward to that. Bye.